All right, guys, I'm getting drunk, and I don't give a f Hi guys, this is really exciting for me to um, start this podcast. It's called I'm um, Hello. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, the reason why I wanted to start a podcast is because I feel like I needed an, I need an extra platform to connect with you guys on a deeper, deeper level. Um, I just feel that the show obviously is edited, which is amazing. Obviously, every reality show is edited. But um, there's so many things you guys don't see and you guys don't learn about me because it's just a short amount of time. It's like 45 minutes that you could put in an episode. So with this, you guys are going to learn so much more about me and so much more about what's happening in my life. I'm going to be raw as fuck. You know that. I'm already drinking, so I'm getting trashed. You know that. I love doing that. So um, get drunk with me. Um, if you don't drink, that's fine. Have a mocktail. Um... I want to start with just saying this new media space is something, like I said, I wanted to do for so long. And like, you know, COVID hit, I got divorced. Um, it took me a while because it really hit me that divorce and it still does. Divorce is like a very hard thing to go through. And I feel like anybody that's been in that situation can understand what I'm talking about because it just lingers and it stays with you, whether you don't love that person or not anymore. Um, I'll always love Chris as a person, as a, you know, as a human, but we didn't work out. So much more happened behind the scenes. I, I really can't say what happened, but I was blindsided. I was blindsided. And I'm going to tell you, it's been very hard for me, you know, um, then having to deal with that publicly, which was so hard for me also. Um, the tabloids, like him going to the tabloids and, um, you know, saying all this bullshit about me really hurt my feelings. Um, I thought we were better than that. And I thought he was going to have my back and we were just going to put out this statement together. But that didn't happen. He wanted to make himself look like the good guy. And of course, Angeline is the, the bad guy. I'm always the bad guy. I'm always the villain. So here on this um, platform, this podcast, I'm Hello, the reason why I need this so much in my life is because I want to show you guys, I could be a bitch, but I'm a nice bitch. I'm not a villain. So you guys are going to learn a lot about me and you guys are going to understand why I do certain things and the reason why I do those things. And I think you guys are going to connect with me on like a deeper level, which is amazing. This is really why I want to do it. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about my early life, uh, my early life, obviously, there's going to be another um, episode that I'm going to talk about, episode one and two, recaps of them that'll come, you know, after this. But my early life was not easy. I grew up like a nomad, basically, moving from apartment to apartment, um, not really knowing what the fuck was going on. My dad was in and out of jail. Um, my mother was always working. She, we never had Thanksgiving. We never had Christmas. I'm like, Mom, like are you going to work again? She's like, I have to make the money. So my grandparents were really the ones, and my grandmother just died on Christmas, which that woman was like my mother. And I'm so sad to say this, but like when you lose that person, like she literally just died on Christmas. So I'm, I'm like so sad about it. I keep talking about it. Cause like, I just always think of her and I feel her. And, um, that hit home for me, but um, my early life was not easy, but because of my grandmother, she made it easy, like better for me because she gave me like holidays and stuff like that. Like we were actually able to have holidays, me and my two sisters. Um, I remember this is before knowing that my father that I thought was my father was actually not my father. You'll learn about that later on. Um, as a child, also, I think I say this on Jersey Shore, but I'm going to, you know, reiterate it for you guys. I was not treated fairly. Um, it's been a tough road, you know. Uh, my father used to put his hands on me. I, I always was like, why? Like, what the f***? Like, 
Like, why are you doing this? Like, it was just so crazy to me. And I really dealt with a lot with him. Um, he was in and out of jail, in and out of jail. And uh, I didn't know, I, sometimes I didn't even know why anymore. I was like, what are you going to jail for now? You know? So it was just terrible. Like, it didn't have a, a father figure, really. Uh, my sisters really dealt with a lot from that, too. Like, my sister Amanda, she took the brunt of it a lot, too, because she turned to drugs. She was not okay. So she really, like, it hit home for her as well. I remember um, as a kid, like, my two sisters, my parents used to smoke pot. And back then, pot was like, no, 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 like, you know. So we would be driving down to Long Beach Island, and I would have to sit in the middle. Like, my father would make me sit in the middle. Why do I have to sit in the middle, Dad? It's like, you have to. And then the other two sisters were right there. And they used to, like, like, hey, what's up? Like, while one would smoke weed, and then they would pass the joint. And I used to put, like, a blanket over my sister's heads because of the, the like, secondhand smoke. That's how crazy my childhood was like my father put braces on me as a young kid he never paid I had to go to a f hospital and have a doctor take them off with pliers it was hard it was a, it's still hard I mean thinking about those days like makes me want to cry but right now I'm just like not gonna cry because I'm like no 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 don't do that I've done enough crying especially this week last week <laughs> the episode's airing right now with me meeting my biological father. Yeah, I was lied to. You'll find, you'll, I'll tell more, I'll talk more about that later. Um, my family struggled a lot. My mother struggled with money. Father never wanted to pay child support. I don't give a shit. Everyone's like, defamation. I'm like, no, that's not defamation when you're telling the truth. See, the problem with people is that they don't want like they're sh exposed, but I'm not trying to expose anybody on purpose to like hurt them. I'm just trying to tell my truth. That's the thing. Like, I think people don't want to get exposed for what they've really done. And then they go right to defamation of character. It's like, that's not what that is. That's, it's actually legal. You, I live in America and I'm allowed to speak like what really happened to me. And this is what really happened to me. Put me on a lie detector test. I will take one. I don't give it. I'll put my hand on a Bible. So my childhood was not easy. Um, you know, I struggled in school. I used to cut school uh, because my aunt lived across, the sh she lived across the street from my high school. My aunt and I are close in age, closer in age than me and my sisters are. And uh, we kind of grew up like sisters. So she also was poor. And uh, I used to try to give her all my toys and like, I love her. We're very close still to this day. Thank God. Um, but like, again, it's been very hard. You know, it's, it's like, unless you're in it, I can't describe it to you. Like, like I just like think about those memories. It's, it's crazy because I have very bad short-term memory, but I have very good long-term memory. And I was just recently told by a doctor that that's from trauma um, from my childhood. What I was taught was, and I'm, I'm going to start therapy on Monday, like for real, for real, from all this, um, is that we all have a backpack and in life you have that backpack and you keep filling it and you keep filling it and you keep filling it and, um, it gets really heavy. And unless you like stop filling that backpack or like take some stuff out, you're going to like overload your backpack. And like, that's bad as we all like can deal with like some like trauma, you know what I mean? If you were ever beaten in your life. Um, a lot of people go through shit. A lot of people have been A lot of people have been like, I'm sorry to talk about like some crazy shit. Like that's the truth about life. Like it's sad. It's really sad. And that's, that's my story. And then finding out 37 years later that I was lied to and that's not my biological father. So I was beaten by a man that wasn't my biological father because he knew that I wasn't his kid. But he used me to get out of jail earlier. Um, he said, I saw an, an, he told my sister, I saw an opportunity and I took it. An 18 month old baby, you just took it. You took that opportunity. That's hurtful. He'll get mad at me for saying this. But again, Angelina is being an honest person. I'm sure somebody's going to come for me for this. But 
I'm going to do this podcast. And like, if people are going to get mad at me for saying the truth, that's on you. That's a you problem. That's not a me problem. Sorry. <laughs> like, I just can be as authentic as I can be. And that's how I live. And I'm not going to change myself for anyone because why, why do I have to? Like, I just should be accepted for who I am. And I feel like a lot of people think I'm some villain or like some bitch. Listen, like I said, I could be a bitch, but I'm a nice bitch. I can, I'll give my shirt off my back for you. Like the big heart, I wear it on my sleeve. My sign is a cancer. Like I take a lot of things to heart. Um, yeah. I mean, it's been tough for me in the last three years. Like I said, has been awful. COVID divorce publicly getting dragged through the mud by people uh, that I work with, um, exposing my marital issues. And uh, yeah, that's what happened with that. So um, I also want to talk about my work history prior to TV. Let's get on to that topic. I used to be a dental assistant, <laughs> which I fucking loved. I don't know why I love that, but I loved being like the dentist right hand person. And I used to work for a, an endo, um, what the fuck do you call it? Oh my God, I don't even remember the word anymore. Uh, root canal specialist. I learned all that shit. I used to suction people's mouths. <laughs> like, like, I used to suction their mouths. Can you fucking believe that? I used to learn like what a burr was. These are like different things that these, it's hard to learn how to be a root canal specialist. It's fucking hard. That's not some easy task, all right? You got to learn like all the birds that go in there and fuck kill the nerves and <laughs> laughing gas. You have to learn how to put that <laughs> on. <laughs> I should be on laughing gas right now. <laughs> this is it right here. All right. And in a solo cup. Perfect for me. Nice color too. Um, so I did that for a long time. And then I got a call. Actually, I'll tell you guys. So it's crazy because I was out at a club one night, but I didn't want to go to the club that night. So it was crazy. I wasn't supposed to be there because I just had broken up with my boyfriend at the time. And I'm like, oh, my girlfriends were calling me. We always ran in this, like, like my friends from high school, still beautiful to this day. It was like the, we, we were always called like the hot shit, like the hot chick crew. Like, and um, they were like, you have to come out. I'm like, I don't want to come out. I'm depressed. And they're like, you're going to come out. I'm like, no. They're like, we're coming to your house. Get ready. Put your best outfit on. We're going out to the club. I'm like, oh, sh. So like I put whatever outfit on, barely any makeup. And they came to my house like they said they would, which I mean, thank thankful for them. If they didn't do that, I wouldn't be on Jersey Shore. So I get to the club and I was like, oh. I was still thinking about my ex at this, at this point. But there was so many hot guys in this club. Let me tell you. It was, it was like, literally, like, hot guys everywhere. I'm like, damn, thank God I came out. <laughs> so me and my friends would just stand there on the dance floor. And we were just like magnets to these men. It was like, whoop, right away. They were all around us. Do you guys want drinks? Yeah, I want a drink. <laughs> better buy me one and the guys used to buy us all drinks i'm like thank you you know we were like cheers like we were all just hanging out vibing but like i'm the one that was getting the most attention i kind of always do <laughs> not just trying to be a bitch like literally this is what was happening and i didn't know this but a talent scout was watching me from like like a separate area watching this whole thing go down. And I didn't know she was watching me for a half an hour. A little creepy. I don't, I don't want to say her name, but you're, it was a little creepy, but I love you. Anyway. So I get a tap on my shoulder half an hour later. And this one guy was like trying to hit on me. He was trying to like grind on me with his. And, shit. and I was like, all right, hello. And she's like, I thought I was talking to her man. I was like, here we go. And, Girls to my girlfriends, because like we used to like get into like a lot of like not fist fights, but like verbal fights, because a lot of guys used to hit on us and their girlfriends would get jealous. That's like how we I don't know. We didn't mean it. Fuck your man, girl. So I said, yes. She goes, listen, I've been watching you for a half an hour. I'm like, 
what? <laughs> That's a little creepy. She's like, I just want to tell you, you are amazing. And I want you to be on the show. I can't tell you what the show is yet. And I'm like, no, I don't want to be on no show. Like I used to never watch reality TV. I used to be like a, a radio girl driving around, listening to like every single like song, like Mace and like, I don't know, like Puff Daddy and like Jennifer Lopez and shit. Like Z100, uh, KTU. I used to be that girl. Never watched reality TV before. I was not that girl. I never liked watching TV. So for me, I'm like, fuck. who the fuck? The fuck? What, what, what show is this? So I actually didn't really believe her, honestly. We go in the back to, she brought me in the back. I told my girlfriends I was going to go. She was, they were like, go, go, go. I'm like, oh, fine. I was like trucking along. We get in the back and the bounces kick us out right away. All right, guys. I seen one of my friends on a, on a stool. He's interviewing. I'm like, what the are you doing? He's like, I don't know. I'm interviewing for some show. He never got on. But she's, she gave me her card and she was like, listen, we got kicked out. I want you to come to the city tomorrow because I need you to interview for this big, sh like this show is going to be big. And I'm like, what is it called? And she still wouldn't tell me the name. So I had my cop friend that I was like, kind of fuck then. <laughs> I don't give a shit to be raw. Um, you know, I said, I was just approached and, um, he was like, I'll drive you. I'm like, all right. Cause he's got that. He's got that that thing the plaque to put in the car did i just make did i just make it look like i cheated on my boyfriend oops whatever i probably did <laughs> i listen i'm not a cheater but like back in the day when like i was a young girl when you weren't giving me attention i would f i would like be like on to the next one that's just how i roll like obviously if you're not getting attention like you deserve you're gonna f one else sorry and that's why I went out that night anyway, because we were broken up anyway. It was happening. So um, he drove me, my fuck buddy, and he waited in the car for me. So I went up, you know, um, this elevator and I get out and there's like this red couch with all these like blonde, hot, big titty, like huge. Like, they were like F cups. Like these girls were like Baywatch bitches. I'm like, what the f am I doing here? <laughs> Why am I here? But um, I was like, oh, I'm not getting this. Shit. So they were like, all right. I signed something. I signed like this whole thing. Still no name to the, to the show. I still didn't know what the fuck I was doing there. Um, it was like five minutes. They called me in. I'm like, oh, all right. They told me to stand behind this like little line that they put on the floor, this tape. And uh, they started asking me questions. And I just, my, I was just being myself. What would you do if you had to live with four hot tan guidos? I was like, oh, well, now that I'm single as fuck, I would put whipped cream all over them and lick that shit off. And the camera guy almost dropped the camera because he was laughing so hard. I put baby oil all over their bodies and rub it like that. Like I was like going in, you know, and I was like, and they were like, well, what happens if a girl would fuck you? I was like, oh, you don't want to fuck me. I'm from Staten Island. Like I am from Staten Island. I'm a Staten Island girl, born and raised. I don't give a shit. Vinny could say all he wants. Vinny Gwen, you know, I don't like Staten Island. You love it. We love it. Once you're born and raised from here, because I'm in Staten Island right now, by the way, at Phoenix Studios. So look, look at me right now in my homelands. It's, I, it's like a circle, a circle back. Like I'm supposed to be here, you know, no matter what, I might have moved to Jersey, but I'm, but I'm doing this podcast out of Staten Island. So it just goes to show you, you always go back to like your roots. Um, and they were dying. Like the fuck answers I was giving them. I was just being real. I was like, I don't give a fuck about anybody else but myself. <laughs> I was like, and I'm, I drink, I party. I was like, I'll fuck stay out till seven in the morning. I don't give a shit to Jonathan Peters. I go to Pasha. You name it, I've been there. I go to Sweet in Brooklyn. That's where I, I actually got casted. And uh, the guy loved the guy loved me the girl loved me and then i'm like I, I leave and i'm like i didn't i'm not gonna get this shit <laughs> and then all of a sudden i started getting calls and they were like all right well we loved you i'm like hello i'm like really <laughs> i was like i couldn't believe it and then i got another call it's like you made semifinals. you made finals but they didn't know that the whole time me and mike the situation were talking and we were dating each other <laughs>
<laughs> That's another thing. Like we just say on this last episode, I'm allowed to say it now that me and Mike went on four dates. He never told anybody. I never told anybody. It just came out last episode, which was Thursday. And everyone's like, what? It's like, yeah, we, we, we kept it in from all of you and the producers and MTV. Even in his book, he wrote that he actually got me on the show. He like pushed my name through. And I'm like, I mean, thank you. But like, how'd you do that? If we pretended we didn't know each other, Mike, what the fuck? I don't know what to believe anymore, but I know that we were very close, Mike and I. So whenever he would get a call, did you get the call? I just got it. Oh, I didn't, or I didn't get it yet. You're going to get it in a half an hour. Okay. And then all of a sudden, ring, ring, ring. You made, so we knew we were getting on the show. We didn't know it was going to be called Guido Beach. And it was actually owned by VH1 at first, but then they, then MTV bought it and they named it Jersey Shore. And here I am back on the show full time. Jersey Shore family vacation became a thing. We are now surpassed. We have now surpassed Jersey Shore regular. And that's so crazy to me. I mean, listen, I, I do fuck put out a lot and then other people try to dig for my dirt. And then they get it. I don't know how. A lot of people, like, when I, like, bring them into my life, that's another thing. I need to have everyone sign NDAs, <laughs> friends, because the <laughs> that I've dealt with in my life from, like, people that I've actually, like, let into my life, like, friends and, like, whatever, it's been such a crazy road for me. It's, like, those people, like, if you just, like, get into a little fight with them or something is, like, you don't... You don't like, you guys are not like vibing anymore. It's like, they want to like take you down. So I'm like, Ooh, I think I should have everyone sign NDAs. Cause that would have been like perfect. Cause then Chris wouldn't have spoke. He wouldn't have lied and said, I leaked the wedding speech, which by the way, you know, I didn't <sighs> really like, I don't know. I, that was just crazy for me. So that's how I got on the show. I did not believe I was going to get on it, but look at what happened. It was God. It was my friends. It was them t telling me to come out when I didn't want to come out. I was like, and I look like sh at night. Literally, it's like when you put the least, like, I definitely feel like us girls, we like stay in the mirror for hours and hours and hours. And it's like, you keep looking at yourself. It's like, okay, what, what else are you going to do to yourself? But if you just go out and like put like no effort in, it's like, for me, I've noticed I've had the best nights like that when I just didn't give a f Maybe that's what I should start doing more. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that's the thing. My platform on the show, realizing that, oh, I realized from like the minute I left, I definitely had, I, I had a boyfriend. I was dating and he wasn't married, by the way. They were like, he was a married man. No, he was legally separated. She lived in Texas. By law, he was going through a divorce. So I was not dating a fuck man putting that out there right now so for anybody that keeps writing that on reddit no like he's married now with kids you know nice guy didn't work out but like i got out of millions because i left because of that guy like i should have never did that my mistake i learned so much from that that i'll never do that for a guy again ever don't ever i have to give you guys advice too don't ever do something for a man or a woman if like you're with your significant other and they don't want you to do your job or they met you doing your job and then all of a sudden they have a problem with it or they want to be part of your job so bad that's like clout chasing or like weird shit going on. It's like just know we have intuitions and we feel things and like I have to like, you know, practice what I preach, but... Yeah, you got you to see the red flags beforehand. Like, you're going to start seeing the red flags. If that happens, don't ever give up your life. Don't ever give up your dreams. Don't ever give up any of that for somebody else. Because would they do that for you? Probably not. Probably not. And this is why I left the show. I didn't get kicked off. That's another thing. I hear a lot of, like, rumors. A lot of people think I got kicked off Jersey Shore. I actually didn't. Um... Sally and Solzano, love you. You actually begged me not to leave. And I was like, you're like, you're going to regret it. And I'm like, uh, I'm not going to regret it. I'm going to go. I'm going to go back home to my man. Did I regret it? I should have listened to you. I regretted the f 
out of it. I am the beetle that left. And that sh** sucked. Then I went back on season two. I got, she asked me to go back on season two. And it was hard. Whew. That was hard to go back after all that sh**. It was like, they were like, they thought I did it. Like, it, it was almost like, like, are you mad at me that I left for a man? <laughs> like, what the f***? I didn't, whatever. It, we were kids. We were kids. I was young. I was young and stupid. You know, now I've grown so much. I'm going to be 38 in June. Um, I've learned my lesson. I will never leave the show again. The only way I would ever leave the show is if the legacy is done. If it, it is if the show is done. That's how I'm going to leave the show. No one's ever going to kick me off. No one's ever going to push me out. No one's ever going to fuck that's me again. Because I learned my lesson. And because other cast members are coming in or whatever, I bring them in. That doesn't mean I'm getting thrown off. So stop your shenanigans on, on Reddit. It's like so stupid to read. Like dumb. Anyway, that's that. Hey guys, just a little PSA to all my animal lovers in Jersey. I always take my baby peanut to Jersey Jill's uh, grooming salon in Freehold, actually where I live. She's been grooming animals literally since she's in high school and truly loves animals just as much as I do with all her heart. She's a registered nurse and we've always just bonded because of me being an EMT and the way she works and how I love being an animal mom and so does she. I'm excited because I'll be at her salon on Saturday, April 20th, supporting an amazing cause. She's hosting a meet and greet adoption experience with Pities and Pals Rescue, Bully Rescue New Jersey, Shore Saves, and more amazing organizations to help local doggies find their forever homes. I'll take pictures with everybody who comes to support the cause because this is really big, guys. Making a donation to this amazing cause, it means so much to me and so much to everybody and the animals. Your donations will help these organization funds their housing and care for the animals in need. Um, so if you want to come by, say hi, meet me, and maybe even even bring one of the doggies home, which I really wish you guys do. Definitely come and check it out. All info will be linked in the show notes um, and on my Instagram, but no donation will be too small. I obviously make no money off of this. I just want to help animals in need find a forever home and to say hi to you guys uh, who come for fun and support a great cause. Honestly, we love animals and I am such a big animal lover. I have 10 cats and I have baby peanuts. So Let's think about my household. Again, the event is Saturday, April 20th. Do not miss it. I'm so excited to see you guys and give back to the community. And I love you all. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see what else. Hardest parts of being on a reality show. That's a good question. It's pretty hard. You know, there's so many times I'm like, I want to be regular. But then it's like, do I really? Like, I wouldn't be Angelina's. <laughs> I wouldn't be Angelina's, you know? Um, I still laugh at the Staten Island dump. Listen, there was a Staten Island dump here. Do you think I give a f I love the fact that I walked in with garbage bags. That was authentic. Like, <laughs> I fucked in with garbage bags. Like, that's how I packed. And there is so, there's a community out there, by the way. I, I know you guys. You guys all tell me. I walk in with garbage bags, too. Like, when I pack, I'm like, I love you. I see you. Let's all do it. I still put gar shit in garbage bags. I don't give a fuck. And could I afford luggage back then? Yeah, I can. I could have. Like, I just chose to just throw it in a fucking garbage bag. The poor producers. I didn't want to go that day. I was so scared. I made them wait in the fuck. I made them wait for hours. I was like, I feel so bad for you guys. But then all of a sudden I'm like, all right, fine, I'll come. I was putting everything in a garbage bag. <laughs> I was like, let's go. And then that's how I walked in the house. And it's like, <laughs> Paul, he was like, this f girl just walked into the house with garbage bags. I'm like, mm, shit, I didn't realize how bad. I didn't think they, was, they were going to air that in, honestly. But thank God they did. Because I'm going to be forever known as that. And I don't give a shit. I love it. I love it. Um, it's hard to be on a reality show. Another um, reason why is because all your is out there. Well, at least all my shit out there. Um, I have diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> so that's why a podcast is perfect for me because 
I'm just going to say it how it is. And I'm going to say like what my truth is and how I see things and um, my opinion of things. And um, no one's going to be able to stop me, which is great. And no one's going to be able to edit this, which is great. It's just going to be raw as f Um, But that is one of the biggest things. Like you get divorced, that just go on TV. Yep. Your ex is going to try to take you down. You're going to be on magazines and shit. Like, I don't even... Kim Kardashian, I don't know how you do it, girl. I got to give you props out to her because she can't even walk out of her fucking house without being photographed. I don't have that problem. I mean, no one's going to come to, like, Freehold, New Jersey and take pictures of me. I mean, sometimes they drive past my house and they go slow. I'm like, all right, they, they know. <laughs> but, like, no one's taking, like, paparazzi pictures unless I'm in Manhattan, which is nice. You know, I like to get some paparazzi pictures taken of myself sometimes. Um, when I go to like Good Day America, Good Morning America, um, shit like that. But it, it is rough though, because if you want to be like private, you can't. Your whole, your whole shit out there. Um, if you have a scandal, like the, you know, San, Scandal, whatever, that shit out there. I mean, Tom Sandoval. Damn, bro, I met you at the MTV Movie Awards with you and Ariana. It's like, did you think it was gonna, you were going to get away with that? Hell no. Damn, dude. I, I feel bad. Like, geez, I don't know what he was thinking, but listen, he's going to make bank from this. So you, if you have storylines that are real, I don't like, like reality stars that make up fake storylines, like, just, like just, just to be on TV. I have storylines that just come to me. Like, I could just be like, Pissing and some and all of a sudden a storyline of, of my life just come I take a DNA test up oh, your fucking biological dad's not your dad I mean you're you're the, the dad you thought was your dad's not your dad you have a, another bio I'm like what the fuck like it just comes to me and I don't ask for it a lot of people are like you're just drama I mean I guess I don't mean it to be but do I thrive off of it no but do I give a fuck? Do I, do I kind of invite it into my life? Probably. <laughs> Drink to that. Cheers. It is what it is. Listen, I don't like the drama. It happens. It is what it is. I'll take it. I'm making the, I'm making the money. It's a job. I love my job. I have to tell you, I'm very, I'm very blessed to have my job. Um, we have been the longest running reality show out there. I think up like the Kardashians have been like, we are the same cast. Most shows changed their cast. We haven't changed our cast. That goes to show you something like that's big. Our fans have been following us since they were younger. Like we were younger in our twenties and they've grown up with us. So I just want to thank you all for that. Um, I, I tweet with you guys every Thursday. just want to thank all the fans out there for, like continuously watching because if it wasn't for you guys, we'd be nothing. So thank you. Um, and that's, Oh, there's another question like here, uh, best parts of being a, on reality show is that the fans, the fans are really what keep me going. I've gotten some DMS about like, I almost committed. And, like you, you helped me. Like I cry from those things. It's like, Whoa, that like hits my heart. It's like, damn, like I helped this person. And like, I don't know that person, but I do write them back. I'm like, oh my God, no, like your life is so important. Like, don't ever do that to yourself. Um, you know, you are so much better than that. And like, you know, the person's like, thank you so much for even responding. It's like, when I respond, they're like, I can't even believe that you responded. Of course I'm going to respond. I try to respond to everybody, but there's so many DMs and thank you for that. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to answer everybody back. I try to get to it. There's so many different folders too. I'm like, why the fuck? A primary and a Instagram? What the fuck? I don't even know. Um, some of the some guy sent me a dick the other day, and I was like, okay. Ask how important are the fans to her? I just said that. You guys are so important to me, for real. Like, if it wasn't for you guys, we would not. None of us would be where we are today. So I just want to say thank you again for that. I don't know if we say it enough. I want to say it enough. Um, I try to say it as much as I can. I really do want to do a lot of it. I, I want to start doing events where I can meet you guys. 
Um, and I could take, I could give you guys hugs. Cause I know you guys like, can I hug you? I'm like, of course you could hug me. Like I'm a human. I'm not a character. I'm not like a fake, you know, simulation character. Like I'm actually a human being. We can hug. I'm not scared of COVID anymore. Like we're good. Um, but I just love the love that I get in my Instagram uh, DMs. There's so much love there. I think like when I open my DMs, I'm like, oh, is it going to be bad? But it's like all good shit. So many people right now with this whole DNA thing have been writing me these stories. And I'm like, holy shit. So many people are going through the same thing. I didn't know this. So I also want to be like an advocate with you guys. I want to like, I want to know your stories. I want to um, help you. If I can reach out to you, if I can meet you, maybe I'll help you find your parents. Like, I don't know. I, I think that's some, there's something there with that because this is just crazy what happened to me. And like, you can't make this shit up. You can't, there's no fucking producer. There's no freaking fake storyline here. This is like really what happened to me. I took a DNA test and then it came back the way it came back. And I was like blindsided, smacked me right upside my fucking head. And a lot of you guys are writing to me right now. And it's so like, just so nice the way you guys are just saying like, you know, I'm sorry it happened to you. And I, I'm trying to write back to all of you. So I'm going to get to you guys as much as I can. I'm planning on revealing everything. I might get people mad. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, not sorry. What is a podcast for? Like, this is what I don't understand. Like, so I've been getting in trouble by, you know, like my dad's mad at my biological father. I'm not even going to call him dad. You don't deserve that title yet. I'm going to call you Alfred, your name. Okay. Um, why would somebody like you get mad that I'm saying the truth and you actually say stuff on camera and then I'm the, I'm the bad guy? No, we're not going to play that narrative here. So that's why I'm doing this because I want my truth to, to come out. If it's not going to be aired, say there's not enough time in the episode to, to let it be aired. I could air it here and um, connecting with the fans, connecting with all of you guys is the biggest thing. I even want you guys to be able to call in. Maybe um, I want your question and answers um, on my DMS. I want to answer all your questions. I know you guys have so many questions for me and it's probably going to be all about the DNA stuff and about like, you know, my ex and I'll answer everything. I'll answer everything. Honestly, you know, um, I'm sick and tired of like being like, you know, somebody's like, he's like, oh, you, you f threw me under the bus. How did I throw you under the bus when you said what you said? You did what you did. It is what it is. That's why I'm being honest. I'm never going to lie. One thing about me is I don't like lying. I hate it. Um, it actually like kills me inside that if like even a white lie, I don't like it. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm here to say my truth, to say the truth actually. So. Yeah, it's really why I want to do this. And, uh, and I, I've also been wanting to do this for a long time. I just never, like I said, COVID hit, divorce, dealing with the divorce again while it aired. So not only are you dealing, that's another thing about it's hard being on reality TV. It's like you're filming, you're going through it, and then it airs. So you got to go through it again. And, and like, an, like six months later, and I'm like, crying again i'm like oh but this is what i signed up for so i'm blessed i am i'm not gonna like complain about it i am blessed i am part of a great cast uh the producers are amazing the cast is amazing everybody's amazing so mtv paramount plus you know you guys have really stuck with us and um we're all thankful for it so Thank you. So my, um, my thing is this, guys. I want to put every podcast out on Juror's Day. I think it's the best thing. I want to put the podcast out first. Then the new episode's going to air. Then I'm going to go on a live with you guys. And I'm going to answer any questions um, like you have for me with the podcast. But not for that episode. Because then I'm going to talk about what happens on the episode on the next podcast. Do you understand? So, uh, Yeah but I love going on lives. I go on lives as much as I can. I go on lives when I get my hair done by Dana, my best friend. We go on lives a lot. 
I'm going to start doing a lot of um, interactions with you guys. I, like I said, I want to do an event with you guys, a couple of them. I really like haven't seen a lot of the fans in a long time. Um, there's so many of you guys out there. You guys live in all different states. Do you want me to go to your state? I'll bring my pot. Maybe we could do like a podcast, like as when it starts getting bigger and not more traction, which I really hope it does. Um, maybe we can do like some live shit. Like that would be amazing. You know, like have like a live podcast where I can like invite you guys up and like have you guys in the, in the hot seat. And like, I'll ask you guys question, you, questions. You guys ask me questions. And um, I don't know. I just love, I love, I love the fans. Like I really do. And Angelina Army, love you guys. Cause you guys are like, if I can't say it, you guys say it for me. I'm like on Twitter, like tweeting while the episode's airing. And I'm like, damn, my army's really fuck like they're telling it how it is. I'm like, yes. Like, it's amazing. It really, I see it. And I'm like, I love you. I love all of you. It's crazy how I have a, like an Angelina army. <laughs> I love whoever came up with that. You guys are like the MVPs <laughs> and I just love it. Um, I don't know how much more I can thank you guys. Like, I don't know how to, how to thank you guys. I just want to do more. I want to interact. Maybe that's how I can do that. Uh, give back. You know, uh, there's so many different things I want to do. I love animals. I want to get back to animals. I'm a big animal lover, by the way. You guys all know I have 10 cats and one dog. I have 10 cats. The last episode that aired yesterday, I, uh, Jenny and I were shaving my cat's asshole because he had shit on it. That's how much I love my cats. Jenny was a nice friend for that. I got to be honest. She's like, you're going to let your cat walk around with shit. I'm like, oh, and she f shaved my cat shit off and then sammy's like i gotta go in the bathroom i'm like yeah you don't want you don't want to smell this right now <sighs> but i have 10 cats and i love them and i'm a cat lady i'm a crazy cat lady and i don't give a shit. i'm always going to be one shout out to everybody that is one we love it a lot of people are dming me i have so many cats too i have a tortoise shell i have a calico cat like I love all the cat lovers out there. So maybe we can, we can do something with animals too, I was thinking. That would be awesome. So I know this one's a little shorter. I just want to thank you guys for watching. This is my first podcast ever. So if I was stuttering a little bit or, you know, saying um, um, um a lot, I will get used to this. This is my first one. Just give me a minute. <laughs> Plus I am drinking. <laughs> I will probably drink more and maybe slur next time. So don't. Don't like get mad at me. Um, I want you to subscribe and write a review and follow the at um, hello podcast. Definitely. I'm going to put that on my, um, my stories. So you guys can follow that and watch extended uncentered uncent there. This is what I mean. This is my first one guys. I'm the fuck up, <laughs> but listen, I'm unapologetically myself. That's the thing about me. And that's why you guys all are like, I just, I vibe with you the most because I relate to you the most. And I love that. Subscribe, write a review and follow at um, hello podcast. I'm going to put it on my handle. I'm going to put it on my bio, put it on my stories. I'll put it on my ass if you want. I'll write it on my fucking boobs. I don't really care. Just make sure you follow it. I want it to go. Whew. I'm going to get it verified too. So you guys are going to see that. Um, watch Tongue Twister extended uncensored episodes on Patreon where the first few people will receive signed note cards from today's show. So I'm going to write whatever I want to with my next guests and some of the things I just went over and I'm going to sign them for you and I'm going to send them out to you guys. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching my first um, Hello podcast. Things are going to get better because I'm going to learn more as I go. Um, and a lot of tea's coming. So stay tuned, guys.
Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to Um Hello with me, Angeliners. As always, be sure to subscribe and leave us a five-star review and head over to patreon.com slash AngelinaMTV for extended, uncensored episodes where you can win fun goodies like sign headshots, note cards from our recordings. Follow us on Instagram at Um Hello Podcast for extra tea. And there's a lot of tea on there. Just letting you know, you guys are going to want to hear it. So follow me there. See you next time.